from this module we are going to start a new direction of discussion in complex analysis known as the complex integration now we know from calculus that there are two major branches of calculus known as the differential calculus and integral calculus and so far uh, we are basically uh, following the footsteps of uh, uh, calculus which is kind of uh, discussion of real valued functions and uh, we are kind of following the same steps in complex analysis and uh, so far we have been only focusing on de de uh, defining elementary complex valued functions and their uh, differentiable differentiability properties okay now uh, it's time uh, to focus on the other uh, direction of discussion which is the integration now this theory of integration is one of the powerful and elegant tools in mathematics so it has uh, not only applications in mathematics but also in other branches of science for example physics engineering and other branches okay so if you talk about mathematics then it has links uh, with the uh, real analysis okay so there is a kind of bridge uh, between uh, the complex integrals and the real integrals and this bridge uh, is a two way uh, uh, connection so in other words techniques from complex analysis helps us in simplifying real integrals and of course uh, techniques from real analysis helps us in simplifying and deal uh, dealing with the complex integrals and if you talk about other branches uh, for example uh, algebra so uh, one of the simplest proofs of fundamental theorem of algebra uh, is given by this theory of complex integration and if you talk about fluid mechanics and other branches of mathematics and similarly in physics and in engineering so uh, it uh, complex integration is helpful in solving one of the complex uh, problems there okay now uh, if you uh, want to define uh, complex integration then it is a very useful uh, criteria and it has been very useful throughout our discussion in complex analysis that just follow the footsteps what we have uh, done in real analysis for example so what we have done from uh, so now in this case we want to discuss uh, complex integration so we want to know uh, what are the footsteps for uh, integration of real valued functions so that's why it's very natural to ask what happened in real analysis now what is integration so integration is uh, as the name suggests that it is we are kind of integrating something we are adding something now uh, what is the difference between this addition and uh, the addition that we have uh, done for example uh, in our uh, uh, first uh, discuss uh, discussions for example adding two complex numbers adding 100 complex numbers and etc etc now the difference is here we are uh, adding infinitely many complex numbers okay so these are not just randomly chosen complex numbers so they have some pattern so the values are coming from the functional values of a complex valued function and we want to know uh, what is going to be the sum of this infinitely many collection of complex numbers so that's uh, uh, fascinating in itself so when we ask uh, how are we going to add infinitely many numbers so this sentence in itself is a very fascinating and powerful uh, thing to discuss okay so and uh, in most in in most of the times uh, we will discuss integrals where we have uh, uh, a fixed complex number answer so uh, that's kind of beautiful thing we are adding infinitely many numbers and at the end we are getting a finite complex number okay so uh, so uh, there are many other uh, uh, points of view uh, from where this uh, theory is is a beautiful thing to discuss okay? now uh, uh, as i said earlier uh, we are going to follow the footsteps of the real integration so let's first discuss what is uh, what have we done in the real integral case okay? now one of the main motivational thing for the existence of uh, real integrals is the area problem now area problem is very simple to describe but uh, area problem is like finding the area of a planar region but uh, this very uh, simply appearing thing has applications from uh, calculating the land owned by a farmer to uh, the fuel consum uh, fuel needed for a rocket mission from earth to mars okay so uh, now let's discuss what is area problem and how do we solve it so the area problem starting from simple region what is the area of a triangle half base into altitude what is the area of a rectangle uh, width into height uh, 
it so if this is a this is b so a into b is basically the area of this very uh, uh, symmetrically shaped very uniformly shaped region but if we talk about other regions okay so this is very randomly shaped region in the plane uh, if you want to uh, calculate the area of this region then it is a clever idea if you kind of divide it into different regions okay so somehow uh, this is a very symmetrical shape so we can find its area and what about these regions so these regions kind of appear as a area under the graph of a function y is equal to f of x and above this uh, interval a b on the real axis and we want to know what is the area under the graph of this curve and above x axis and between the uh, numbers a and b so that is uh, our area problem and if we can answer this thing then uh, we can find the region area of any uh, randomly shaped region in the plane so uh, precisely speaking what is the area problem so given a function y is equal to f of x that is continuous okay so these are the mathematical conditions that we impose in order to uh, find the answer okay and uh, non negative on the interval a to b okay so it should be non negative so in other words uh, the graph of the function is above x axis okay now we want to find the area of the graph f of x uh, between the interval a and b on the x axis okay so let's say this is a this is b and we want to find this area so what is this area so this is our question mark now let's see how to find this area so uh, the the technique or uh, uh, the trick that we are going to use is to first approximate this area okay so we know how to calculate the area of a rectangle so we uh, approximate first this area with the area of rectangle so what do we do we divide this interval into regions x0 x1 x2 x3 x4 such that uh, the width of each rectangle is the same let's call it delta x so basically delta x is the same for each and every region so if you want to calculate uh, x i plus 1 minus x i then it is the same width and for the uh, length of this rectangle we choose the midpoints of these intervals okay so let's call it x1 star x2 star and x3 star and x4 star and we find the functional values at these points and this is going to be the length of these rectangles so what is going to be the approximate area so the approximate area is going to be equal to i is equal to 1 to 4 because they are 1 2 3 4 rectangles and f of x i star this is going to be the length of the rectangle and delta x this is going to be the width of the rectangle so that's approximation of the area or, and of course if we take more rectangles then the approximation is going to be much more closer to the actual area that we want to find okay now uh, on the same lines if we go on and if we increase the number of rectangles then uh, it is going to be closer and closer to the actual area under the graph of this function and above the interval on x axis okay as you can see on the screen as we are increasing the number of these rectangles then the area is getting closer and closer to the actual area that we want to calculate and uh, using the same terminologies uh, we can write it down in the following way so this is the area the sum of the areas of n rectangles so here n is the number of rectangles k is equal to 1 to n and uh, this is the length of the rectangle and this is the width of the rectangle and we are adding all of these areas and over here uh, the important thing is we are basically calculating the limit uh, so this n is the number of rectangles so number of rectangles uh, approaches to okay so number of rectangles approaches to infinity so when it approaches to infinity then it is going to give me the exact answer okay so which is this integral a to b f of x dx so that's uh, uh, kind of uh, we answer uh, the real uh, integral case so hence we have the following answer to the area problem if we have a function which is a continuous function and non negative on the interval a b then the area from a to b and below the graph of this function f of x is basically this uh, uh, real integral a to b f of x and is defined in the following way 
and uh, as we know from real analysis that uh, uh, that's not how we calculate uh, when we actually uh, try to calculate uh, uh, area of a given curve this is just a definition and then uh, there are simplifications in the definition and then we use uh, those simplifications there are different formulas and uh, there are different uh, for example uh, the product rule and uh, how to integrate uh, power function etc etc so using all these um, formulas we can actually calculate uh, the integral uh, of a given real valued function in a much simple way and not in this way okay but that's how we uh, define uh, this definite integral now moving on to the complex integration so in real integration uh, we have uh, the domain to be uh, an interval on the real line and uh, uh, a very natural kind of generalization to the complex integrals uh, would be that uh, we are we want to integrate a function a complex valued function along some uh, sort of path or curve uh, which is uh, uh, contained in the z plane or the complex plane so this is a kind of analog of the real integrals okay so in real integrals we have closed intervals intervals along uh, uh, real axis and uh, since uh, the domain of complex valued functions is the com whole complex plane so uh, a natural analog of these uh, intervals would be uh, the curves in the complex plane okay so that's uh, kind of fixed now so our problem is how to integrate a complex valued function f of z along a curve c in the complex plane now this curve c is called the contour so what is a contour so it has a technical definition so our first step in uh, evaluating these complex integrals is going to be how to define these contours mathematically precise way okay so it's it's a sort of uh, uh, curve but it has some mathematical conditions okay so in our next discussion we are going to focus on what are contours in complex plane and uh, of course our uh, next step would be how to define uh, integration of a given complex valued function along these contours in the complex plane so in this uh, module we uh, introduced uh, what are complex integrals and uh, of course we haven't yet defined them but uh, uh, we fixed a strategy of dealing with these complex integrals so the strategy is uh, to follow the footsteps of the real integrals and try to uh, generalize them to the complex case and in our uh, next module we will first define what are contours and then we will uh, go on and we will move on to the definition of complex integration and then of course this theory will move on to its advanced stages.